Hello, I'm United States Senator Saxby Chambliss and welcome once again to our YouTube report. This week in the United States Senate, the focus has been on one of the main functions of the members of the United States Senate, granted by our Constitution, and that is to give the President advice and consent on the confirmation of judicial nominees, and in this case, the nomination of Elena Kagan to the Supreme Court of the United States. This is a very critical position, irrespective of who the president is and who the nominee is. We have only nine Supreme Court justices, and under the system of government of the United States, the Supreme Court plays a critical role in the activities that each and every one of you have to live by every day of your life. So it is a very critical decision for us to have to make, and it's incumbent upon us, whether it's a Republican president with a Republican nominee or vice versa, that we examine the individual and try to find out what kind of Supreme Court justice they will be, and hopefully try to make sure that we put people on the court who are not going to legislate from the bench, but who are going to make decisions based upon the Constitution of the United States and decisions that have been rendered under that great document. In the case of Elena Kagan, I like to give deference to the president, to any nominee, but here I had too many unanswered questions to be able to support her nomination. So I voted against Elena Kagan to go on to the Supreme Court as one of our nine justices. My reasoning was really multifaceted, but there are three primary objections that I had to Ms. Kagan's nomination. First of all, it's extremely unusual to have anybody nominated to the Supreme Court who has not served some time on one of our federal benches or maybe one of our state benches. In the case of Ms. Kagan, she's a very accomplished person from a professional standpoint, but she's never written a legal opinion, and therefore it's difficult to determine really what her beliefs are and how she will decide critical issues as a member of the United States Supreme Court. So what we have to do in order to try to figure out what her real uh, mindset is, is to go back and look at memorandums that she's issued in these various positions or specific actions that she may have taken that would indicate what that mindset might be in deciding issues that are very important to citizens of the United States. This has been a real problem, the fact that she does not have judicial experience. Here, I looked at various memorandums that Ms. Kagan wrote as a policy advisor to President Bill Clinton. I looked at her record as the dean of the Harvard Law School and have concluded that her inexperience on the bench is a real problem in her mindset and what, how I think she will approach those critical issues that are going to have to be decided by the Supreme Court in future years. As Dean of the Harvard Law School, she would not let those military recruiters on campus because, frankly, she objected to the don't ask, don't tell policy that was implemented during her years as a policy advisor to Bill Clinton, and we know this because of memorandums that she wrote. And I think that's the fundamental reason that she would not allow those recruiters on campus. She did that in spite of the Supreme Court having rendered a decision 180 degrees opposite from her mindset. That's a real problem. Lastly, my objection to Ms. Kagan relied, uh, rests on her thoughts and what limited writings we have on Second Amendment issues. I'm a strong believer in the Second Amendment, and I think uh, the Supreme Court has spoken loudly and clearly on the fact that not only members of Chicago and Washington, D.C., where there have been critical issues decided recently by that court, have the right to lawfully bear arms, everybody in America would be affected by a negative decision coming out of the Supreme Court on the issue of the Second Amendment. She has been very active as a member of the Clinton Policy Advisory Board uh, with respect to anti-gun measures, and I just cannot support somebody going to the Supreme Court who is not going to be 100% behind the various 
provisions of the United States Constitution. So my vote against Ms. Kagan is based on any number of issues, but those are just some of my problem areas that I have with her. I look forward to getting back home during the month of August and into September and visiting with any number of the nine and a half million people that I represent in our great state of Georgia and visiting with you about the serious issues concerning health care, concerning the out of control spending in Washington, concerning the spiraling debt that we're saddling our children and our grandchildren with, and as well as issues relative to the war on terrorism, particularly what's happening in Iraq and Afghanistan right now. So it's an exciting time for me, and I look forward to seeing you in various parts of our state over the next several weeks. God bless you.